Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 21. Book of Revelation chapter 21. We're going to look at verses 3 through 8. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 8. The title of the message is, Is Your Eternal Destination Hell? Is Your Eternal Destination Hell? Is your eternal destination hell? Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with them, with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 8, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Amen. Father, Thank you for this day, for allowing us to gather here and congregate fellowship here at a King James Bible Believing Church, Amen. Lord. We're very grateful and blessed. I uh, pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Ghost Amen. so that he may preach a sound doctrine, a convicting sermon yes. that will change our lives and make us become better Christians Amen. here while we walk on this earth, Lord that we may be a good witness for you, the Lord Jesus Christ, and be able to share the gospel onto the lost souls out there so that they may try to receive you as their Lord and Savior, so that they may get saved from the burning lake of fire, Lord. Uh, pray for any viewers online that if they're not saved today, after watching this sermon, that they get convicted Amen. by the Holy Ghost Amen. and that they call out to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and get saved. And for any members here that are attending here at church today, if they're not saved, Lord, we pray that they understand this doctrine and they understand the message and that they call out to you and get saved, yes. Lord. And we also pray for all the lost souls in Ukraine, Lord. We pray that you watch over the, the, the missionaries over in Ukraine. Please be with them. Provide them with strength and courage to continue on. While, while all the bad things are going on in Ukraine, Lord. And we pray for, for, for Russia, Lord, uh, for the soldiers that you open up their eyes, and the President Putin, that you open up their eyes and soften their hearts and let them know what they're doing is wrong, Lord. And we pray for all the lost souls out there on earth, Lord. And we pray for today's message. Please keep our minds clear, our yes. hearts open, our ears open to understand your word preached from the pulpit, Lord. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Hell is a subject that's not discussed enough in the word of God by the, you know, all the preachers out there in the pulpit. That's true. Yeah. If you were attending any church in the past, I can guarantee you, Hell wasn't something that people preached on many times. Hell is not a popular subject. People make fun about hell, and people use this word in many derogatory terms. However, according to the word of God, hell is real. That's the number one thing. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, the Bible says hell exists. The Bible says hell is a literal place. The Bible says it is a destination of people who's listed in Revelation 21, 8, we just read. Revelation 21, when we read, you know, first few verses, those are for Christians, say people, who's going to spend eternity in heaven with the Lord forever. Woo! But the second part where we see, but the fearful 
And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. That is the destination of people who reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There is a lot of misconception because of so many famous people talking about hell in the wrong way. And sometimes it becomes to the point where they used to believe it and they turn away from the truth. And that's apostasy. And prime example is Billy Graham. Billy Graham was used by God. I believe it. He preached. Many souls got saved. But later in his life, he compromised. And he believed that hell is just separation from God, eternal separation from God. You know what? I mean, partly it's true. However, it doesn't end there. Hell is eternal separation from God where you will burn there forever and ever and ever. Jesus Christ did not preach about hell. Jesus Christ did not talk about hell and just say it's eternal separation. It ends there. He said it's literal place. If hell wasn't real, why would Christ say such a thing? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. That's why it is important. Whether you're saved or unsaved, you need to constantly think about this destination, this eternal destination, hell. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. We're going to read from 27 to 30. If you haven't heard about hell too much, because you haven't really, you weren't around people who really care, right? And people who do care will talk about hell. People who, do, who loves you will talk about hell, right? I mean, when, you, when we think about Ukraine and Russia conflict right now, what do you think about, right? I mean, there's a lot of horrible things that's happening. You know, people are dying. You know, families are lost. I mean, it's heartbreaking if you see news to see people, you know, leaving their, you know, long-time places of, you know, home and have to walk and have to uh, walk across, you know, to Romania, Hungary, and Poland just to avoid the conflict. You know, it's sad from a materialistic point. It's sad from a relational point. But it's more sad if those people were to die without Christ. They suffer during their lifetime, and they're going to suffer for all eternity. I mean, that is a sad thing. And as Christians, if you understand that, and as you pray for them, you've got to have more love for the lost souls out there. I mean, you've got to have more compassion for the lost souls out there. If you have a friend, if you have a family, if you have a cousins, if you have co-workers, they might reject the gospel at first. But if you do truly care for them, that's not going to be your only time talking to them about Jesus Christ. Because do you think maybe, you know, a few years ago, people of Ukraine thought, okay, you know, in 2022, Russia will invade our country. Now I better get ready for it. No, you just don't know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, maybe you know if you have, if you're part of the global list, you know. But besides from that, when you are dealt with that kind of situation, you don't really think about many things. You think about safety, and you start thinking about life after death. Why? Because you're going to die eventually. I mean, for the wages of sin is death. So you're going to die no matter what. Yeah. It's just that how soon are you going to die? Are you going to die tomorrow? Or are you going to die a year later, five years later? But you're going to die for sure. Right. And no one's going to deny that. I mean, has anybody ever bitten death, you know, besides from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? No. Buddha, right? right. You know, Muhammad, you know, popes. Nobody can right. beat death. Not you nor me can beat death. You know, we're going to die one day. Yeah. It's just that after you die, where are you going to wake up? When you open your eyes, are you going to wake up in heaven? Or are you going to wake up in eternal torment in hell? You know, when you talk about Ukraine and when you talk about war and you talk about little children and women and elderly, what do you talk about? You talk about their safety. Safety is number one. Don't you want to have a safety of knowing that you're going to be in heaven after you die. Amen. If there's no safety, you know, I don't envy you. And I feel bad for you. You know, I feel sad for you because after you die, if you don't know that you have that safety of going to heaven, then you're going to most likely end up in hell. Yeah. 
And there's no safety in hell. Hell's made for devil and his angels, and you're going to just burn there forever and ever and ever and ever. It's not about millionaires. It's not about billionaires. It's for all eternity. If what billions of people believe is truth, which is the word of God, and if what Bible says is true about heaven and hell, and if you reject what the Bible says, and if you reject what Jesus Christ says, then what's going to happen? You're going to be burning in hell forever. God will have to judge you. Whether you're saved or unsaved, God's going to judge you. It's just that if you're saved, he won't judge you whether you go to heaven or hell. You'll be judged after what you've done for the Lord, after you got saved. However, if you're not saved, if you did not trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, then you've got to be judged. And in that judgment, think about it. You know, there's burning fire, and you've got to be thrown into that fire. And you've got to be burning and burning and burning. You know, I don't know about you. I mean, I talk about this many, many times. The, I think the most severe pain a human being could go through is literally a burn. Yes. Burn victims, you know, they might have like a two inches of Vaseline to alleviate some pain. But if doctors have to perform on them, I mean, I've heard stories, you know, you know, I mean, at my work, for safety reasons, we had someone come from, you know, those hospitals. The screams of burn, burn victims is uncomparable to anything else. I may mean, imagine. But they, they're going to go through that pain for just their lifetime. But for you who reject Jesus Christ, you will go through it forever and ever and ever and oh. ever and ever. It's a sobering thought if you're not safe, if you think hell is just a joke and it's something that people just talk about for, you know, to get conversation going. I mean, because a lot of people think that hell is symbolic, right? If you don't live the good life, you know, you're not going to go to heaven and you're just going to be separated from God, right? God is love, you know, God is just love. You know, Jesus Christ is all about love. But why did Jesus Christ preach about hell more than anything about heaven, right? Why? Because he knows that, you know, people are on their way to hell, and majority of the people will end up in hell. Yes. And hell is not a temporary place, as some people might say. Hell is a permanent place. Think about it. Hell is a permanent place where you're going to be, there's going to be gnashing up teeth, and just going to burn and burn and burn forever. And people say, oh, you know, it's still not real to me, right? You know what? Then get a lighter and start burning your hand. Put it under your hand, put it, you know, behind your hand, you know, put it on your feet, put it on your arms, right? That's how it's going to be, but for all eternity, in extreme heat, in extreme fire. And don't think that it's just a little tiny, you know, fire that you see, right, where you could just handle it here and there, you know, skim your hands through like on a, you know, candlestick. No, it's going to be a fire, fiery fire, and you're just going to burn Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, if you're there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. The Bible says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old times, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. You know, this is the Lord saying it. I'm not telling you. It's not some, you know, nobody telling you about this. This is Jesus Christ saying, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Can you imagine? Right? They say, oh, Jesus Christ, full of love. You know, this lovely person says, you know, just pluck it out. I, mean, I don't know about you. I mean, I mean I don't, I'm, I'll be scared to pluck my eye out, right? right? I mean, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Verse 30, and if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. Man, if, if, if your hand start committing sin and, you know, Lord said what? You know, this is you know, during the thousand-year kingdom, by the way, so don't apply it right now. You know, we're looking at it devotionally, right? He said, what? Cut it off. Cut your hand off. And I know for sure that every one of you 
here and listening, you've done something wrong with your hand. Yes. Your right hand, your left hand, you know, whatever hand may be, or both hand, you've done something wrong. And if you were to be in that thousand-year kingdom in that period, what did the Lord say? Cut it off. Why? For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. I mean, if it was just an eternal separation, if it was just a grave, why would the Lord preach that? Amen. Because it's a literal place. Yes. And again, you know, young people, it's because of the times that we live in. Right. I mean, they think hell is a joke. They think it's a place of party, right? Yeah, there's going to be a party, oh, you yeah. know, gnashing up teeth and pain forever. Yes. You know, I mean, constant cursing at people. They mock the Bible, right? right? You'll never win against God. I mean, you'll never win. I mean, you could say whatever you want against the Word of God, right? I mean, I guarantee you, one day you'll bow down and say, Jesus is Lord, because you're going to, according to the Word of God. And Bible clearly says that, you know, especially during the last days with this apostasy, people are not going to take anything, you know, seriously, especially when it comes to heaven and hell. And when you think about heaven and hell, and especially if you think you're a just person, you're a logical person, analytical, and righteous person, think about it. We have so many murderers out there who's never been caught. They do and they commit perfect crime, perfect murder. They might have killed like, you know, maybe 20 people, 30 people. You know, we've heard stories, right? You know, hundreds of people, like Jack the Ripper and whoever. And your understanding and thinking is that, okay, they're just gonna, they, they were never caught and that's it. And if you're a just person, as in, you know, you stand for what's right, and you have a conscience of going towards what's right, you know, you might, you're probably thinking, man, that's not fair. You know, that's not fair. What if someone wronged you, right? right. You know, they, they killed one of your family members. They murdered your family members, your cousins, whatnot. And because of lack of evidences everywhere, you know, they're released, and they're free men. You see a lot of mafia bosses, right? You know, drug bosses. They order a lot of killings, right? And they're never caught. They live a very luxurious life. And then you're like, okay, it's, it's fine. No. I mean, if you think that's wrong, then why is it that you think that's wrong? It's okay. But when God said because of your sin and their sin, they're going to burn in hell forever. Why is God wrong? God is right. God is just. God is God of love and God is God of judgment. That's why as a human being, you have to pay for your sins. That's why the Bible says for the wages of sin is death. That's why there's a place called hell which is made for devil and his angels. It's not even made for you. It's not even made for you to, you know, burn there. It's made for devil and his angels. Then imagine you're going to burn there forever and ever, which was prepared for devil and his angels. And can anybody here raise your hand and say that I'm stronger than the devil? I'm smarter than the devil? No. I mean, think about the pain. Then you know for sure now that, man, it is pretty serious, right? Yes. It is pretty serious. When you hear the word hell, what goes through your mind? And especially if you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what goes through your mind? I mean, is it like, oh, yeah, it's just something that religious people talk about. You know? But, you know, there's, you know, Dr. Ruckman talks about it too a lot of times. All the atheists, you know what they say when the plane is crashing? They say, oh, my God, right? <laughs> when they're about to die, you know what they say? They say, oh, my God. Right? They say OMG all the time. Why? Because at the end of the day, you know, 
you are going to worry about where you go after you die. That's why billions of dollars will never get you to heaven. Amen. That's why, you know, doing good works will never get you to heaven. Yes. It's not what you do. It's what you, or it's who you know, right? What, yes. what you do with the person, Jesus Christ. Then you need to realize that, oh, man, you know, maybe I've been a fool. Maybe I've been deceived by the world, the devil, and the flesh. Yes. You know, there's a place called hell, and I don't want to go there, right? You know, we had a 13th president of the United States. I don't know if you guys remember every order of, you know, president. You know, some, some people do. You know, I'm amazed by it, right? 13th president of the United States is Calvin Coolidge. You know, he's got a cool name, right? Calvin <laughs> Coolidge. And, and Mr. Coolidge believed in the word of God. And then, you know, someone, just, someone said, you know, what do you think about hell? You know, you know I don't want to go there. Because what the Bible says. Wow. <laughs> what about you? I'm like, uh, I mean, can you, I mean, we're talking about president of the United States. And it's like, you know, I, you know, I don't want to go there, right? Why would you want to go? Why would you even want to take chance when probably people who are smarter than you, people who are wiser than you, knew better and think, oh, yeah, you know, that's not a chance that I want to take. And when we look at some of the verses in the Word of God, you realize it. Word of God, Word of God never comes back void. Right. So as, as you read it and as you hear it, think about it. Let's turn our Bibles to the same book, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, verse 41. So it is very, very important for you to make a decision today. Don't just listen and think, oh, that was, you know, just good information. No, you have to make a decision. Yes. You have to make a decision. Man, if I don't trust Christ, I'm going to burn in hell. If I trust him, I'm going to go to heaven. Simple as that. Yes. Last thing you want to do is, you know, walk out that door and get hit by a car and die and wake up in hell, right? Right after you heard how you can go to heaven. You don't let to do. your eternal destination be hell. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, the Bible says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. So it's a fire. It's a hell. It's a place of fire. I mean, you're just going to burn there. And it says what? Everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels. I mean, that's the definition of hell. A place where fire burns forever and ever and ever. If you ever see some kind of documentary, if you read, you know, Fox's Book of Martyrs or any of those books, you know, people were burned at the stake. Why do you think people were burned at the stake? Because that's the most painful way to die. Yes. And imagine you're getting burned. You know, I, they don't burn from top to bottom. They usually burn from bottom up so that you could feel every inch of pain. You could feel every burn and sensation, right? You know, but, you know, our forefathers of faith went through it. And then they stood up for faith. However, what about those people who weren't saved? And it was getting burned at the stake. Because there were a lot of politics going on during those days, those dark ages. And maybe you were that one unfortunate person. You know, they blackmailed you, and then you were on a false trial, and you were sentenced to death. And then, you know, you had to go through that very painful way of dying, burning at the stake. And then, what do you know? After last breath went out of your mouth, you wake up, and you're still burning. Woo! Man, this burn is hotter, hotter, and it's, there's more pain. Man, it's so painful, man. You're, you're gnashing your teeth, right? You've seen pictures when you go to hospital. Yes. When people are so hurting, you know, they bite down their tongue. I mean, they bite down their mouth so much, and then they're 
teeth are gnashing. I mean, you can kind of hear it. Yeah. But imagine that that's something that you're going to go through for all eternity. Pain after pain, torment after torment. And the word is critical, everlasting fire. It's everlasting. I mean, God is everlasting. So hell's going to go everlasting, yeah. right? And heaven's going to go everlasting on the other hand. Amen. Then why would you even take chance? I mean, if you're even a little bit wise, think about it. If someone told people of Ukraine, where you stay, there's high likely chance of you know, Russian soldiers attacking. So you need to move. Get away from there. Majority of the people will move from that place to a safer place. As a sinner, on your way to hell, you're at that place. Now, you don't know when the bomb's going to go off. You don't know when someone's going to shoot you. You just don't know when you're going to drop dead. You've got to get out of that place and go to a safe place. Go to that refuge. And who provides that? It's not your government, right? It's not your religion. It's not your good works. It's not your money. Only Jesus Christ can pro provide that haven of rest, eternal security, you know, eternal safety. In the same book, let's go to Matthew chapter 5 again. Matthew chapter 5. It has to be ingrained in your brain, in my brain, to realize, man, hell is a place of fire. There are many souls right now burning in hell and on their way to hell. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it if you are on your way over there? And what are you doing about it after you got out of hell? And if you know people who's on their way to hell? Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Man, thank God that's not right now, right? And then all of us will be in judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of Hell, fire. You hear, you know, this term, right? Hell, fire, you know, hell, fire preaching, right? Yeah. You know, good old days, right? You know, Bible dumpers, you know, all those crazy preachers. Why would they preach about hell, fire? Because it's real. Yes. I mean, it's real. That's why they preach about it. That's why you hear it. That's why I preach about it. Amen. That's why other Bible believers preach about hell, fire. Right. Why? Because it's real. And because... You're going to be tormented in flame. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. So if you know anybody, and if you yourself aren't sure where you're going after you die, then there's a likelihood that you could end up in this horrible, 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 eternal, tormented, I mean, tormenting place. Why would you want to take any chance? Luke chapter 16. Verse 24. You know, it's a rich man and Lazarus. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I mean, it's a literal you know, account of a person who's going through it, you know, right now, still, right? Yes. Nowhere does it say it's a parable. It's not a story. It's a real event. And this rich man is burning continuously. He knew, so he's, I mean, he wanted, you know, his family to know about it. But it's too late, you know. And there's already all the information out there. You know, this gospel is out there. And you're going to be burning there, tormented. I don't know about you guys. Man, when I'm thirsty, it doesn't feel good. You know, especially if I'm thirsty for even a little bit. Man, you know, I need water. Yes. I need water, water, water. You're burning. Imagine you're walking down, you know, Deserts around us, right? We have deserts everywhere. Say you're in Death Valley, and you have no water. It's 127 degrees outside, and you're just walking. 
how thirsty would you be? But in hell, you're going to be tormented in this flame forever, forever. You gotta be thirsty for eternity. Imagine that. I mean, you're, you're just gonna be burning in torment, you know, but you have no water, and you're just gonna be burning and burning and burning. And in that state, you know, there's no turning back. You know, God has got many chances, many, many chances while you're alive. Once you're dead, it's over. Once you're dead, you have already made your eternal destination known. Yes. Either heaven or hell. And if you know that hell is a place of fire, if you know hell is eternal separation from God, and you know if it's a hell is eternal place of torment, why would you want to even take chance of going there? It makes no sense, right? Oh, yeah. I'd rather go to hell than heaven. Oh, man. That's, that's like, you know, dumbest thing a person could say. Yes. And a lot of times those people say those things because they don't know. Yeah. And they don't know the realities of hell. If they understood and they heard and they knew about the real place called hell, they'll never say such a thing. And that those are the folks probably will be the first one raising their hand. Man, I don't want to burn in hell. What, what do I need to do? You know, what should I do? Right? It's not only a place of torment, it's also a place of sorrow. Who wants to be sad here? Right? I mean, you and I become sorrowful just thinking about people of Ukraine. Think about our missionaries over there. Think about lost souls out there, right? You know, people, innocent people dying for no good reason because of people's greed, right? Yes. But you yourself will be in hell because you rejected Jesus Christ and you got to be sorrowful for our eternity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I could just imagine, right? Your tears are streaming down your face. You are burning and burning, right? You're disfigured, but it's going to go on forever. And you're so sad. It's that deep, deep sorrow you're going to feel for all eternity. And there's no way about it, right? Oh, man, what if, right? Man, it ain't hell too, though. When we read Revelation 21, 3 and 4, for those who are saved, God shall wipe away all tears. God did not say that about hell. Imagine in hell, it's not only you you're remembering. You're remembering all your loved ones too. Maybe because of your sayings about hell and, you know, making jokes about it, they're in hell too. And imagine... They are burning because of you. Wouldn't you be sad? If your mom and dad is burning in hell just like you because you rejected the gospel and you made fun of it, right? I don't know how you could continue, but you have to continue in hell. When there's no, like, killing yourself, suicide. There's no suicide in hell, right? Right now here, a lot of people, when things are hard, right, they have family issues, relationship issues, they have money issues, you know, all kinds of mental issues. You know, they jump up the bridge, you know, jump up the building, you know, go jump in front of a train, you know, kill themselves, you know, carbon monoxide or whatnot, hang themselves. So they could end it just like that. But in hell, you can't end it. You're just going to burn forever. Man, that's a horrible thing, too. Like, you want to end that pain. You know, just like in Switzerland, they have an assistant suicide machine now. You know, so people go there to end their suffering once and for all. However, in hell, you can't. You can't end it on your own. And it will never end. Because the Bible says it's everlasting. Everlasting means forever Amen. and ever and ever. And thus... Think about Calvin Coolidge. That's why. Why would I want to burn in hell for our eternity when I don't have to? It's like this. 
I mean, if there is a you know, pothole full of poo, right? If I don't have to jump in there, I don't want to jump in there. But some of you guys are like, it's OK, you know. I'm just going to jump in the pool. I mean, pool of pool. And um, I'm going to jump in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. I mean, no one in their right mind will say such a thing. Right. You're going to avoid it. You don't want to go there. Well, you don't want to do that with you know, temporary you know, pool puddle or pool pool. I mean, pool pool, right? Yeah. I mean, why would you want to take chance of burning in hell for our eternity? Yes. So we, we talk about torment, sorrow. I mean, this is eternal punishment, right? Everlasting punishment. And what was, what's the word punishment mean? You know, you're going to suffer. Punishment is there for a reason, right? Punishment is for those who do not follow the rules. Yes. I mean, you punish your children if they don't follow your rules, right? right? You get punished at school if you don't follow the rules. Yes. You get punished in society if you don't follow the rules. Rules. True. And God has rule. Yes. And God has his own rule. If society could do it, if schools can do it, if family members can, I mean, your own family can do it, why can't God do it? And God will do it. Amen. Whether you like it or not, God's going to perform his judgment for those rule breakers. You and I are born as a rule breaker, yes. by the way. That's right. We're all sinners on our way to hell. Yes. It's not like you and I had a choice to go to hell. We're already on our, when we're born into this world, our destination is hell and was hell yes. for those who are saved. So, you know, first, first get that out of the way. You know, it's not like, you know, I was born and then I had a choice of going to heaven or hell. No, you're, you're a straight way, you know, it's there hell, it hell. Now it's up to you to whether get out of that road yes. and go to heaven, right? And it's not only about torment, sorrow, punishment, and it's an eternal place of weeping. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. This is not a preaching to put you down, you know. This is about a preaching where I want you and everyone else, especially God, wants you to get saved from hell. Yes. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. It is God's will that you get saved. Yes. You know, God never wants you to just burn in hell. However big of a sinner you are, God died for all. Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his precious blood for every sinner. Thank you, Lord. From the smallest to the biggest. Yeah. So don't think that, I mean, you shouldn't even have a guilt trip, right? I mean, do you think you are a worse sinner than Apostle Paul? I mean, who just ordered Christians to die, yeah. right? right? I mean, so, I mean, you shouldn't have any guilt trip about, oh, you know, I'm such a worse person. No, no, there are people who's worse than you who got saved, yes. right? So don't have self-pity party with that. Just get saved from hell. Right. Yes. Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, the Bible says, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, it's sad. During the times of war, there's a lot of weeping. You know, there's a lot, a lot of people sad. Imagine, you know, there's a heartbreaking story. There's a soldier from Ukraine to hinder and stop the advance of, you know, tanks, Russian tanks from coming in to the city, he had to put a booby trap, mines. However, he didn't have enough time to put it and run away from it. So he called, you know, his, his team, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die today. And if I could die you know, stopping them even a little, you know, I've done my job. So he set up the mine, and then he exploded together with the mine, and then hinder, you know, some of the advancement of the tanks coming in. And when you see, like, those things, don't you think his family will be weeping right now? Yeah. Right? I mean, his, his you know, his soldier mates will be weeping as well. 
I mean, this guy sacrificed his life for the country. I mean, those are good weeping. Joy, I'm not saying joyful, but it's like a patriotic weeping. Yes. But in hell, it's not even that. It's just sorrowful weeping. You're just regretting, you know. You you keep on getting reminded, man. Why did I reject that day? Why did I reject, you know, when that preacher, when that brother, when my friend, you know, when my family told me about hell? And why did I reject it? Oh man, I'm such a fool. And then you start weeping, right? And it's continuous. I mean. You, <laughs> When you weep so much right now for whatever, you know, hardships that you go through, you get super tired, right? Yes. You almost like your tears dry out. Right? You have no more strength to weep anymore. But in hell, you're just going to be weeping forever. And there's going to be gnashing of teeth. If you think about those things, wow, you know, that's, that's, that's a place I would never want to be in. That's a place I would never, even my worst enemy, to be in. I mean, that's just the, I mean, the worst place a person could ever be put in, not just for one month, but for all eternity. Any, you know, along that road, I mean, along that note, let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. If you were never serious about hell until now, maybe you are now. And maybe it's time for you to really seriously think about you know, your eternal destination. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. The Bible says, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Do you, have you ever heard someone wail? I mean, wail... It's like someone's so, so downtrodden. It's like a, almost like a shriek. Like it like pierces your ears. It's like, and you see wailing, say, for example, if your child, if your son was killed by a drunk driver, you see the mother's wailing. If you see parents, see their children die, or they were murdered, and on their grave side when they're crying, that's wailing, right? If you see your husband, your wife, being was murdered, and then you're at their grave side, you're wailing. So you kind of understand what wailing is, right? Man, but you're gonna be wailing for eternity in hell. Imagine that. I mean, you're just constantly wailing, and. When you think about that, I mean, that's not a place to be, even for a little bit. And let's go to chapter 22, Matthew 22, verse 13. Matthew 22, verse 13. Matthew 22, verse 13. The Bible says, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's a place of darkness. Right? It's a place of darkness. You're in total darkness, just burning. You're in torment, wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth, right? And punishment. And there's more. And there's more description, a lot more descriptions in the Word of God about hell. Then there's a choice for you. You go to hell if you reject what the Bible says. But if you don't want to burn in hell, you believe what the Bible says. Yes. First, you need to know that you are a sinner. Have you ever lied before? Right? Have you ever disobeyed your parents before? Have you ever had like lustful thoughts, hateful thoughts? You know, not just outward you know, sin, but inward. Then everybody's a sinner. Yes. That's what the Bible says. For the wages of sin is death in Romans 6.23. And you have to realize that, you know what, I'm dying. And I'm going to die because I was born as a sinner. But we read in Revelation 21.8, there's second death. Eternal lake of fire. You're going to burn there forever. You know, first death, right, your body will turn to dust. But second death is where you'll be burning forever 
in hell, right? Then if you realize that, the question for you is, if you know you're a sinner on your way to hell, do you want to burn in hell? If you don't, then you have to make a choice today. Because the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us, in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. All you have to do is trust him as your Lord and Savior. As I mentioned, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're repenting hard. Just realize that, God, I'm a sinner on my way to hell. And I don't want to burn in hell. I want you to save me. And with that mindset, you can get saved. You know, Romans 10, 9, 10 says what? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then you have a choice. You can either receive him as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell, or you could reject him and take your chances of burning in hell. There's nothing wrong with receiving Jesus Christ because you don't want to burn in hell. Get saved. Why? Because that's, why, that's the reason he died for you. Amen. He loved you so that you don't have to burn in hell forever. If the word of God is true, why would you want to take any chance? Why would you want to go against what the Bible says about hell and not accept and trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Hell is a real place. It's a place of torment, suffering, gnashing of teeth, weeping, eternal punishment. But you don't have to go there. That's why Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. If you want to trust Christ right now and get saved from hell, in this prayer, receive Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Prayer does not save you, but it is your understanding and doing it from your heart that's going to save you. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for all my sins, coming into my heart as my Savior, and saving me from hell. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, the Bible says you have eternal life. It's not what I say. In John 1, 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, 1 John 5 says what? He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. Did you know that you are a sinner on your way to hell? Did you believe that Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood? Did you receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior? If you say yes to all of that question, then you're saved Woo! once and for all. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I said. We have a perfect proof that the, what the Bible says. Yes. Then, I mean, you have that safety now. No matter what happens to you, if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never have to worry about burning in hell. You'll never have to worry about, you know, will, will I be, you know, in eternal torment, gnashing of teeth? No, you don't have to worry about it. Christ loved you so much, he shed his precious blood and died for you. And he died for you once. And when you realize you're a sinner on your way to hell and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior once, the Bible says you have eternal life. I mean, that is the greatest Thank decision you. you can ever make. Then, when you were asked, if you were to be asked, is your eternal destination hell? You say, no. 
my eternal destination is heaven. Amen. Even if you want to go to hell now, friend, brother and sister, you can't go anymore. <laughs> Why? Once you get into God's family, you can never get out. Amen. Right? I mean, that is, that is the greatest joy, greatest yeah. blessing. That is greatest assurance you yeah. can ever have. So in closing, where are you going you know, after you die? You're already destined to hell. Don't burn in hell for eternity. I mean, trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, and don't ever have to worry about it. Amen. Heaven or hell, because you'll be going to heaven, because that's what Lord promised, Amen. and that's what the Bible says. Amen. Let's pray. Amen.